I'm gonna make a little video uh, about the tractor, primarily about the uh, backhoe. And um, I was a professional backhoe operator for about 300 years back before I was born. So I definitely know what I'm doing here. No, no question about that. Backhoe is something I really enjoy playing with it. And, uh, Doing a little odd jobs for different people that need it done, and it's just a lot of fun. So, anyway, thought maybe I'd make a video, do a little hole or something. So, right now I'm just kind of getting backed up over here where I'm gonna start my dig at. I'm just going to kind of dig up in the edge of the woods right here, so i got some trees to maneuver around. I'm going to lower the bucket down a little bit and raise the front wheels a little bit. I'm going to get on the back back here and let the rear stabilize it down. I typically put them on the ground and then just kind of nudge it up just enough to get the back tires to release the weight. You know, when you initially start your dig, you always want to try to dig just very lightly. You know, right here I've got a hold to a root, so it's kind of ripping out a wider spot than what I really want. So that's really not a very good example, but if you was digging in your yard and your lawn or something, this next scoop right here would be kind of like what you would want to do. Just let the teeth scrape right across the top. And this kind of initiates your dig pattern and kind of kind of sets the stage for where you're going to be digging at. Here's a little bit better view. You're just kind of scraping the teeth across there. And I'll go ahead and fill up the bucket and dump them on out. I try to let the teeth do the bulk of the work. So many times I see people, they'll drop their bucket down and all they'll do is they'll drop the bucket down there to curl it up and let it do all the digging. They don't move the, uh, the dipper or the boom in or out or anything. And uh, that puts a lot of stress and strain on that one hydraulic. Um, anytime that you can do all three things, it's a whole lot better. Get the bucket down in there, curl it a little bit, bring the dipper in, raise your boom, get a nice big full pile. And then when you dump it, you push your pile back and dump. And if you get in a habit of kind of kind of doing that when you you know you go to dump your bucket, you kind of set it down on top of the pile and push what's on top to the back and dump what you've got in the bucket out. Here we go, we're gonna do it again. And this will keep the pile from getting so high that the uh, dirt rolls off the side, goes right back down in your ditch. So right here we got our teeth doing the work and we're getting a nice scoop of dirt. Now you can see we're kind of pushing that pile back and then dumping that pile, dumping that dirt right where we pushed it back from. Now right here what we're going to do is we're going to kind of clean the side of the ditch. And it's a good idea to clean actually both sides of the ditch. I don't do it here, but 
you get the idea of just kind of push the stuff back so it doesn't fall back down in the ditch because you know if you're running a long ditch this kind of sucks when you go back after you finish your ditch you go down the other end and you see all the skirts and fell back in there especially if you're trying to dig for a drain and you need that kind of you need it to fall gravity When you're, when you're digging and you're uh, swinging your bam over and all that kind of stuff, generally it's, it's rare that your two controls are all the way forward or all the, just straight forward or straight back. Typically they're up in the corners. You know, if you think of your thing like a joystick, like a square, you kind of, you're kind of working around the corners, kind of move it around in a circle to get it to do what it's going to do. Yeah, we just kind of inspect the ditch and see how deep it is. Hey, Daisy. That's my dog, Daisy. She's been sick. Anyway, it turns out the hole is about uh, near three feet deep. And this is what it looked like in there. Just to give you an idea. And we're going to go ahead and start covering the ditch up. And as you can see, I didn't move very much dirt right there. But I'd rather not move a lot right there than to move too much and bend the boom. Because, believe it or not, this is a pretty hard maneuver um, to fill in a ditch. Is when you do it when you do it like that, it puts a lot of pressure. I've seen quite a few booms that were bent or cracked from trying to push too much dirt too heavy a load of dirt or something from the side like that if at all possible use your front end loader I do like kind of pulling it like I just did with the teeth to the side to me that seems like it doesn't put quite as much pressure on the machine It's a lot of fun to run the backhoe and um, kind of play around. <laughs> and I've actually made some a little bit of money with it too. Got to push some roots down in there. A little out of roots right in there. Now right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab it, pull it, and swing. It's probably not as much pressure doing it like that because I'm kind of pulling it in and swinging it over as opposed to just swinging it over if you know what I mean I don't know if I explained that right or not but anyhow at this point I'm just kind of packing it down in there it's always a good idea to pack it down in there a couple of times depending on how deep your ditch is if not you end up with a big pile of dirt and it takes a while for it to sink down in their hole and especially if you're digging in somebody's yard you know honestly I can't imagine not having a backhoe you know, having a tractor and not having a backhoe for it, I just can't imagine that. That would just totally suck. <laughs> I just, I really enjoy the backhoe a lot. I mean, I've got a lot of other implements that I enjoy too, but I really enjoy this backhoe a lot. I, I really, honestly, I never thought I would have a tractor with a backhoe on it. Uh, so I must have been, something must have happened right. <laughs> When you run these tractors and um, you got the RPMs turned up running back, I don't generally run the RPMs real high, probably 
around 1500 I guess and 1500 on mine is not 540 PTO yet so I think 540 is like 2800 so um, I'm running under the 540 PTO speed and um, but even that low if you pull back on that left controller which controls the boom that thing will sling up in the air super fast and it would just shake that tractor all over the place in fact you're going to kind of see a sample of that here in a few minutes now right here basically this is like the last thing I like to do when I'm cleaning up around the plate or cleaning up around the ditch is kind of rake it back with the teeth like that get it down to that um, top soil and I'll just rake it back a couple times and then I'll swing it on over there to where the ditch is and that kind of kind of helps me from keeps me from having to get a shovel out and do it by hand or get a rake out and rake it by hand I still might have to do a little bit of raking but you know if it was in somebody's yard but where it's at I'm not really worried about it but there, there was a little bounce right there but you'll see a bigger bounce here in a few minutes it'll bounce pretty good and anytime that the, that the uh, backhoe bounces like that it's not good it's putting a lot of putting a lot of stress on it a lot of stress on the tractor so I try not to let it happen but it does happen from time to time I've, I've seen it happen to a lot of people so uh, not going to stress over it too much but it's worth noting to try not to let it happen like I said if at all possible you want to backfill your ditch with a front end loader it's just right here I was, there was so many trees around, I couldn't get in there. There's my big balance right there. And I gotta empty the bucket out, get the dirt out of there a little bit. And that's about it for this uh, for this hole. Kind of got it covered up. Get the outriggers up. Don't want to forget that. It's not good to drive off and forget your outriggers are down. That's why it's good to make sure your back tires off the ground a little bit, so that you don't rip the rears off trying to pull off with them steal it down so typically I like to run over top of the ditch just to kind of pack it down with the weight of the tractor and if it's in a yard or something I might drive back and forth over it a couple times I'm not going to do that here because it's just up in the woods anyhow that's about it um, like I said nothing fancy just uh short simple kind of video it was a lot of fun to do got to try out a bunch of different cameras that i have and get some different angles and shots and whatnot and uh it was a great day it was december here in virginia and believe it or not it was like 70 some degrees and i was just having an awesome day man i felt good i was having fun i can't imagine having a tractor without a backhoe if you decide to buy a tractor I'll certainly advise you to try to get one with the backhoe if at all possible. You'll, you'll be glad you did. Appreciate you guys watching my videos. I look forward to watching some of your videos as well.